Mills Young here. What's up, fight fans? You guys ready to get to talking about this week's fight card? I am. UFC Fight Night going down this week on ABC. 14 fights to go over, so man, let's get on into it and start talking about the best fights that we have on the card and go over the odds and see how we can get the best value. And hey, man, let's go over our best picks and predictions and see where we end up at top. First off, before we do that, you guys got to smash this like button for me one time out there. If you guys are first time watching this video right now, smash that like button right now. Put in your comments below, what was the first MMA fight you ever watched? What was the first MMA fight you ever bet on? All right, now let's get it on and started. All right, we're going to be starting from the main event all the way down to the prelims. Starting off with the first fight of the night on the main event. The main event is what we're here for. Josh Emmett takes on Ilya Tapora. This is going to be taking fate in the featherweight division right now. Josh Emmett, 18 wins, 3 losses, taking on Ilya Tapora, 13-0. I mean, when it comes down to it, Illa Taporia is a minus 300 favorite facing a fighter who just fought for the interim title, who has that knockout power. Hmm, which way do you guys think this one's going to go? I think this fight's definitely not going the distance. I'm not laying 3-1 to one odds on Illa Taporia, but I do think Illa Taporia has what it takes to finish Josh Emmett inside the distance. That's for the main event. All right, going on down the line. Co-main event time, women's delight. Amanda Rebus taking on Macy Barber. 11-3 Amanda Rebus, 12-2 Macy Barber. Macy Barber's on a four-fight win streak right now. She just got a debatable win over Andrea Lee. I was in there. She didn't win that fight but she won us the money. All right, Amanda Reba, she's coming off of a couple of good wins too in this division, but we got to see, is she going to warrant that price tag? She opened up at a minus 170. Now she's up to a minus 200. If you ask me, I think this is one where the dog might be out the cage. All right, next fight on the card. We're going to the big boys, heavyweight fight. Justin Toffa, 6-3, taking on former football player Austin Lane, 12-3. Yeah, Former football player. Austin Lane used to play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coincidence? I don't think so. Justin Toff is coming off of a fresh knockout over Parker Porter in his last fight out. Austin Lane's going to be making his debut coming from the Contender Series in there. If you ask me... I don't know. It's heavyweights and it's big boys. Let's get down to the odds. Justin Toff is a minus 170. The comeback on Austin Lane's like a plus 130. I think Justin Toff is going to get it done. Uh, Austin Lane stands around there too high with his head up high on the center line. I think Justin Toff gets him out of there. I'm going with the finish under one and a half rounds in that one. Next fight on the card is going to be taking place in the featherweight division. David Onama, 10-2. Takes on Gabriel Santos, 10-1. David Onama, man, this guy, last time he was out, he had a war versus Nate Landwehr. I was at that event out here in uh, San Diego, and man, check this out. He opened up a minus 180 favorite, got steamed up to a minus 3-1 to one favorite. This was the fight to where I knew somebody personally who put $3 million on David Onama. $3 million on David Onama. Three million and, and they lost. Okay, he was the three to one favorite. Okay, and uh, yes. So let's get down to this fight. Gabriel Santos, man, he had a nice uh, debut against Leron Murphy. A lot of people thought he won that fight. Huh? I thought it was close enough for Leron to get the win. Now in this one, he opened up uh, minus one eighty favorite. Money's coming in. He's a two to one favorite now. Coming in at a two uh, minus two twenty price tag on here. If you ask me in this fight, I like both the fighters. I think Gabriel Santos can get it done fight not going the distance in this one all right moving on down the car brandon allen takes on bruno silva 21 and 5 brandon allen steps in to take on bruno silva 23 wins and a few losses but when it comes down to it this middleweight fight right here is something that i've been watching these fighters fight for a long time both these fighters made a name in the lfa a smaller organization before they got to the ufc now brandon allen is over here kicking and calling names, you know what I mean? He's calling his shot, you know? So he had a, a great win in his last win out. Bruno Silva, too. Uh, he finished his opponent, I think, within the uh, within the first two rounds. He really needed that because, uh, yeah, man, uh, I think he got subbed by GM3 uh, fight before that. And it started looking the other way for him. But the gambling odds, Brandon Allen's a minus 160. 
I kind of like that price tag for him right there. I think he has a lot of ways to get it done. Bruno Silva, the only way he gets it done is with a, a explosive knee or something like that. So I think Brandon Allen gets this one done. Also like fight not going the distance. All right. Now look, 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 look. I just went over all the fights on the main car, man. Now I need you to smash that like right now for me one time, man. Smash that like. Let me know who you're betting on in these fights. All right. Now let's move on over to the prelims, man. I'm going to be honest with you guys. The prelims got some of the better fights on them than the main card. Prelim time. All right. Neil Magny, 27 wins, 10 losses. Taking on Phil Rowe, 10 wins, 3 losses. Neil Magny, former Ultimate Fighter, uh, 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 fighter, man, he built his career. He has the most wins in the welterweight division, more than GSP. For the people that don't know, that's George St. Pierre. Yes, Neil Magny has more wins than him. Phil Rose coming off of a couple of good wins too. But hey, let's get down to the gambling odds. Neil Magny opened up a minus 170. Okay, come back on Phil Rose plus you're around uh, plus 125. All right, if you ask me in here, both these guys have a lot of measurables that measure out. All right, both tall, linky fighters, but if you ask me, Neil Magny's going to be putting a pace on here, and he can go for the takedowns in here. I like fight to go the distance. If it doesn't, I think Neil Magny wins by sub. All right, next fight on the card. This one's going down in the welterweight division. Randy Brown, 16 wins, 5 losses. Taking on Wellington Terman, 18 wins, 6 losses. Wellington Terman stepping down a weight class for middleweight. Now... Coming down the Walter way. All right, Randy Brown's last time out, man, he got flatlined by Jack Della Madonna. Can't, 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 can't hold no grudge against him about that. I mean, Jack Della Madonna is, is the truth. Wellington Terman, though, I mean, his last time out, he lost to Andrew Petrosky right now. He's moving down a weight class, so he's trying to really find out where he fits in this organization. If you ask me, Randy Brown's a minus 220 favorite. I think he gets this one done 100% on here. Only way, uh, you know, Wellington Terman has a chance is if he subs him, and that would be early in there. Uh, I actually think fight not going the distance. Under two and a half. I love that one right there. Shout out to my man, Briz. All right, moving on down to prelims. This one's going to be taking place in the lightweight division. Matias Rebecki, 17 wins, one loss, taking on, look, Ragnarok's 17 wins, four losses, one draw. All right, Rebecca last time out got a win over Nick Ferry, but he didn't look that good in there. He was supposed to finish the opponent. Mm -hmm. Man, that thing went all the way to the judge's decision. Luke, man, former PFL fighter, man. He was on the Ultimate Fighter, got pulled off there, made his UFC debut, was able to get the win. If you guys like wrestlers, if you guys like grapplers, you like Luke. And me, I like him in this one. Why? The opening odds. Rebecca opened up a minus 120. He's up to a minus 150. The comeback on Lewick is, you know, plus 115. All right. I like the dog in this one, man. So let's keep going on down the card. Whoo! This one right here. Baby shark, 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 baby shark, shark. Tabitha Ricci, a.k.a. the baby shark, steps back in the cage. Eight wins, one loss, taking on Jillian Robinson. Twelve wins and seven losses. This is going to be taking place in the strawweight division right here on the prelims. Matchup, grappler versus grappler. Wrestler versus wrestler. Hmm. But if you ask me, man, I think this one's going to get played out on the feet a little bit. And if it does, Tabitha Ricci has superior striking over Jillian Robertson. Just because Jillian Robertson striking is just really not there yet. But I will tell you this one, man. This is going to be... One of the fights everybody want to watch the weigh-ins for, too, because you want to see how these fighters actually line up on the size. Tabitha Ricci is only like 5'1 or 5'2. Jillian Robinson stands around 5'4 or 5'5. She's going to have the uh, taller reach uh, uh, in the height advantage, too. But if you ask me, Tabitha Ricci opened up a minus 115 up to a minus 130 right now. I like the baby shark in that one. Let's get it on and get it moving. We only got a few more fights to go over, so I need you guys to keep doing what you're doing and smash that like. Hit it. It won't hit you back. Try it. No, no, no. Try it, man. I, I, ain't, I ain't talking until you hit the like. Thank you for hitting the like. All right, let's go. Moving on down. All right, this is going to be taking place in the flyweight division. Zagas Almagulov. 14 wins, 8 losses. Taking on uh, UFC newcomer Joshua Van stepping into the UFC. Let's just talk about it. Zala Zalman Gulbov had three fights now, and they all got scrapped and canceled. He weighed in for him, you know, making weight, cutting weight, and in the midst of fight week, all three of them got canceled. Let's see if he shows up. He opened up a minus 190 favorite. Okay, if you ask me, 
Z's been on the wrong side of a lot of judges' decisions in the UFC. Do you think that trend's going to keep going or you think he's going to get a win against a UFC debutante? Hmm. There's no way I'm laying a minus chalk 2-1 to one favorite on a fighter who has, like, no wins in the UFC, bro. Like, it don't matter. If it goes to the judges' scorecard, they're giving it to the other guy. Hear me out. Last fight. He was fighting a guy named Charles Johnson. At the live odds at end of round three, he was minus 1,200. They gave it to the other guy. Let's keep it going now. All right, all right, all right. Now, next fight on the card, man. We got a banger, man. A banger, banger alert. All right, taking place in the lightweight division. Trevor Peak, 8-0, undefeated, taking on Chepi Marcel. 13 wins, 6 losses. Trevor Peak, he's one of those guys to where he made his debut last time out and finished his opponent real quick. Chepe Marcel, I know this guy a lot. Fought in LFA. His last fight out. We was already calling for him to come in the UFC. Hey, it only takes time and matter. So, man, this guy, when it comes down to it, he opened up an underdog, a plus 125 underdog. Money's been coming in. He's like the favorite now, minus 115. Uh, both these guys like the finish. If you ask me, this fight's going to be like the Torres fight on last week. I don't think this is going the distance. I never say play under one and a half. I'm playing the under one and a half. Let's keep it going on. We only got three more fights to go. So let's keep it going. And this one's taking place in the featherweight division. Who we got? Jamal Emers, 19 wins, 6 losses. Taking on Jack Jenkins, 11 wins, 2 losses. Jamal Emers right now is starting to show up and show out and show what he's about. Okay, first time in the UFC, you know, he was on a couple of bad incidents of the fight, you know. He was on the bad end of the Pat Sabatini fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was winning that fight until he lost it. But, hey, forget about the past history. Let's get down to the gambling odds. Jamal Emers opened up a minus 170. Now he's up to a minus 220 favorite. The comeback on Jack Jenkins right now is a plus 145. Um, Jack Jenkins, a uh, former uh, fighter from the Contender Series, made his debut in the UFC. Didn't look that, that good. But he looked good, you know. Um, Jamal Emery is going to have the reach advantage. He's going to have the height advantage in here. But if you ask me, man, the fight IQ is just not all there, man. I think Jack Jenkins is a live dog. The dog might be out the cage in that one. But if you ask me, best bet in that one fight goes the distance. Oh, right. Only two fights left, man. Let's get on down. And these last two fights, wow. This one right here, I mean, look, 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 you guys. For all you newcomers out there that's just getting into MMA and stuff, you guys might want to watch these. Uh, this fight for sure. Toshiro Tara, 13-0, representing Japan. Taking on Clayton Rodriguez, 8-2, representing Brazil. Okay, it's taking place at the flyweight division. This fight right here is two top prospects head-to-head. -head. I don't know why the UFC are putting them against each other, but they are. Tara... He has fights in the UFC. I think he only has two or three, probably two. But one of his fights, he was a minus 1,200 favorite. The other one, he was like minus 300, minus 400 favorite. Clayton Rodriguez, man, when he comes out there, he shows up, man. He only had one bad uh, fight, and that was a robbery against uh, CJ Vergara. Besides that, he's been showing up in these fights. But in this one, Tahara opened up a minus 320 favorite. Money's coming in on Rodriguez. Tahar is down to a minus 230 favorite. A submission specialist. <sighs> man, I like both these fighters in this one, man. Um, yeah, I really do. Um, if you ask me, I think Tara is a, a, a strong parlay piece. And then, yeah, man. I, yeah, man. I, I, Tara wins by submission. Round two. Yeah, l l let's go with that. But it hurts me to say it, man. Clavison Rodriguez is live. Anybody who wants to bet a live dog and wants great dog money, the dog's out the cage on that one. Clavison Rodriguez. All right. Now, we're up to the last fight of the night. Last fight of the night. Who are we talking about? Cody Brundage, 8-4, steps in on short notice to take Cedric Dumas, a.k.a. the Slim Reaper, the Grim Reaper. All right, 7-1 Cedric Dumas made his debut in the UFC three months ago, taking on Josh Frim. His original opponent, Ahmed Azatar, pulled out, so he had to fight a short-notice reporter in Josh Frim. He looked like he was, you know, winning some of the exchanges, and then he just got subbed in the second round. Looked like he gassed out a little bit. I had the pleasure of interviewing this fighter. He said he mentally just wasn't all there. Interviewed him again two days uh prior to this taping right here, talked to him right before the fight. His mind is ready, and he's ready to go. But guess what happened? 
the opponent pulled out again, and now comes Cody Brundage. Cedric Dumas was supposed to be taking on Soriano. Now he's not. Cody Brundage steps in after his last performance against Rodolfo Vieira. He was winning the fight, then he stops, pulls guillotine, and gets choked out. I mean, before that, too, uh, coming off another loss. But he trains with the same fighter in the same camp who just fought Cedric Dumas. Now look, hear me out. Cody Brennan's opened up a minus 115. Pick him price. That only stayed like that for a day or two. He got up to a minus 130. The books took it off. Brought him back out two days later. Minus 180, minus 190, 200 favorite. The dog's out the cage on this one, if you ask me. Cedric Dumas, um, he has six finishes when it when he's out there. Um, he's a kickboxer, but he can he he can he can wrestle, he can grapple, you know, if he needs to. Well, let me let me rephrase that. He really can't wrestle and really can't grapple like that. But he can go for takedowns, all right? All right. So if you ask me in this one, I think the dog's out the cage in this one, man. There's no way I'm laying a uh, two-to-one favorite on Cody Brandage, um, you know, who doesn't have the fight IQ, coming in on short notice, too. So the dog's out the cage in that one. Give me Cedric Dumas in that one. All right, man. Now, look, man, we went through the whole card, man. 14 fights here with Mills, man. All I need you to do is smash that like. Put in your comments who you betting on, who's your best dog, what's your best pick, and what's your best parlay. All right, now look, 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 look. It ain't about how you start, it's about how you finish. So, MMA, make money all day, that's just the business. See you guys next week, man, while we go over the recap for the best fights and the best prices. Here with Mick y Mills Young at Pick Dogs. If you want to see my best bets, what I'm betting on, my premium picks, my packages, Head on over to Pick Dogs. You can't go wrong.